hello everyone and welcome to my channel so today I wanted to do a micron pen and watercolor painting of a lionfish I love these fish they're absolutely beautiful and I had fun yesterday doing a lizard with micron pen so I thought you know what I'm gonna stick with drawing because I love drawing above everything so I'm going to draw and then paint over the top with the uh, watercolour. So, but I'm going to have lots of fun drawing all the lines and all the detail of these guys because they are magnificent. And as you can see, I'm going straight in with micron pen. Now, I've just got to measure his body. So his head is one, two, three times. So one, two, three. So his body's that long. So I mean, at least I know where I've got to end, basically end his body. His, and his fins go up about double the height of his body there. I'm just going to do the rough outlines of his fin of his fins. That's his actually his um, pectoral fin on the other side. The spines are on his back. So I'll draw them in. And they go like that. I don't know how many he's got, but I'll ad lib a little bit and I'm just going to drop that camera down a fraction so you can see the top of it. And they get slightly longer as they go towards the back. So his, his back end ends. So one, two, three, about here. So do that. And I'll do that one sort of laying flat because the last couple are laying flat on his back like that there we go and then drop that down a fraction more for you there you go okay so now he's got his pectoral fins actually comes up and in line with part of his body and they're sort of separated a little bit at the top he's got like spiny ones at the top and then they come down and around like that and he's got like a clawy bit I'm just going to do the outline sh the, the shape of the outside of it I'll add the inner details. In just a minute. Like that. That goes like that. All right. So then his body comes up. And his tail goes off to the back there. I've got him quite high on the page, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to do the outside shape. His tail sort of turned around there and he's got a fin there that comes up like that and a fin that comes down like that. So it's not exactly like the photograph in the reference but I think I've got it. I've got him too squished up the top, haven't I? Oh, we'll see what we can do. Anyway, we'll start to draw the lines in. We can do that easy enough, and that'll help him to come to life. Might just take that tail out that way a bit. There we go. start to draw in these patterns he's got a, a line that goes that way where his mouth is and it comes up and around here I can do his actual eye jet black and I'm using a 003 micron smallest micron I can get for this light outer line detail and 
come down. So this is basically the same as drawing a zebra. It's it's very similar. As long as you've got your outside shape okay, the rest of it will come along. I should have had him more central to the page, but that's all right. I can trim that up. So I'm just going to come up here. I'll draw his spiny bit. So I've changed the shape of his tail a little bit. Not the end of the world. Because he's going to have all stripes and things. These are all individual little finny things. I do love fish. I've got two aquariums. <laughs> got lots and lots of fish. Um, my daughter had river fish for a long time in a giant two metre tank. And now I've got goldfish and tropicals. So I do love them. They're very relaxing to watch and they're incredibly relaxing to draw. <laughs> All right. And these guys, um, our local. Or well, not our local, a pet shop in a couple of towns across has got these guys in tanks. And they're quite magnificent to look at. All right. So you can see I'm changing it from the original drawing as well. I've actually lengthened the tail a little bit, which is fine. Because even though I'm drawing it in micron and not pencil first, it's not the end of the world. You can still change things. I can actually add detail in amongst it and that will disappear the errors that I've made. And I do love drawing. I just love microns. And I just love going straight on and practicing my drawing without a sketch underneath. Because drawing skills are very important and I practice most days. I do practice most days. So what I'm going to do is then connect all that with little bits because that is all connected like that. But yeah, I, try, I do draw most days. I have a little sketchbook in my purse that goes everywhere with me. And you can always carry a little notebook and a micron pen. And you can practice a little bit every day, just drawing whatever it is that you see, simple things, like little birds when you're sitting having a cup of coffee, or all kinds of things. Fence posts, houses, I used to do that quite a lot. I'd go take my daughter into the city and I'd, when she went to work, when before she had her licence, and I'd drive her in and I'd just stay there, because it's such a long drive to get to the city. And I'd sit there and I'd draw all day. I'd find a nice cafe and I'd plonk out the front and sit there and draw. <laughs> used to draw a bit of attention too. Um, used to end up with people watching, which was sometimes fun, sometimes not so much. All right, so I'm just going to get this line down here. And he's got beautiful, soft, wavy pattern on his fins which I will fill in, I've got, because that's the hard part, is remembering which bit to leave the, the outside lines. And the top of it's a spine. So I'll do that spine line. Whoops. Spine line. And then come down here. And the same on this one. Every fin pretty much on this little guy has a spine. Over there. He's got another one coming up the middle here, but it's not quite as long. And then this fin comes into the middle there. Like that, I'll pop a little spine there. And then he's got, the pattern goes like that almost. They're very beautiful symmetrically. Their patterns are gorgeous. They're like a natural mandala. <laughs> they are like a natural mandala. I nearly drew another lizard today. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about doing a um, chameleon. 
But then I thought, nah, I was really feeling like doing fish. Fish are fun. Especially these guys, because fish are so colourful. You can get so many amazing coloured fish. You really can. They come in all types and magnificence. When I was a kid, I used to, my favourite thing to draw, one of my favourite things to draw, was sharks and dolphins and whales. When one of the first memories of drawing fish was whales and dolphins. And deer. <laughs> whales, dolphins, deer. In that order. <sighs> it's funny what you remember as being a kid and what you like to draw. Alright, so come down and around there. Like that. You see, I'm because I've done the outline, I, I can sort of just make up where the picture's going to go. And I will thicken up these black lines. There we go. Now the same on the tail. I'm going to work on the fins first because that's the hardest bit I think. So I'm just going to add some length and spiny bits to the underneath tail, underneath fin, like that. Take them down and around. Like that. And then I can, he's got little dots on these ones, so I'll just add little dots in between everything. Are they in line? They are not really, they're a little bit, they're sort of symmetric. symmetric not completely. So that's fine. So I'll just add those in there between the spines. Like that. And just randomly sort of popping them there close to how I want them. And these are all dark so I can use my black thick micron Fill that in. Just having a quick look. Um, so he's actually got I'm going to turn all of these into spiny ones. Because that's his other that that other side. So that comes down there, because that's actually his other pectoral fin. It's not on his spine, that's his pec. Um, Alright. So his spinal fins come down here, and then his pectorals have got that pattern on them. Like that. And I'll just pop that in a little bit more. Like that. Pop that around the edge. Like that. Okay. So that's pretty much that top fin. Now, this little one at the very back of his body. I'll add the spines because that makes it easier. So just add the spines in. And drawing is such for it's so relaxing. Okay. And then he's just got dots. So I'll just do one line of dots. Another line of dots. I've painted this guy digitally. I've done him in digital art um, with a black background and he looked quite dramatic. I haven't done a watercolour one. I did. I think I did, a, I did a pit pen one as well. I haven't done a watercolour one. So this is my first watercolour line fish, I think. From memory, I think he's my first line, my first watercolour line fish. Now the lines start to get bigger going across his back. They get much more defined. I had to be careful on these ones, actually draw his spine and then mark in the lines. Draw his spine, mark in the lines, draw that spine, 
mark it in the pattern. Just going to extend that one a bit. Like that. And come down and around. All right. And the pattern sort of goes up onto their fin a little bit. So I'm going to take that down and around. And it comes around his body like that. So the, the, the lines join in pretty much to the back. I've got him a little bit fat, I think. I suppose there's skinny ones and there's fatty ones, isn't there? So we'll just um, go with it. And there's another one, a spine that I missed. There we go. Pop that in. And then these patterns come down and between his body, I can actually make that a little bit bigger like that. And that'll help to thin out his body a little. Because I didn't do it base drawing first, I can't erase anything. I've got to make it up as I go which is sometimes a bit of fun and a bit challenging. I do like a challenge. There we go. Okay, he's sort of filled in. Okie doke. So now I'm gonna grab a thicker micron. I'm gonna grab my five or a three, a three will do. It's gotta be a micron because they're waterproof. I've got a three and a five. Right, because I wanna go over the top with watercolor so they have to be waterproof pens and I know I trust microns they are they are waterproof and I can go mad with them and do whatever and add as much water over the top and I'm using watercolor paper I'm using Archer's hot press Archer's hot press which is a smooth watercolor paper so I'm actually gonna define some lines more I need him to be bit more defined in some areas. Now he's more of a, a brown but he does have strong black lines. So I can go over these now a little bit, which I will do. He's looking pretty cool. Hello, Shane. How you going, Dull? How are you? How are you? Sorry, I got focused on me drawing. <laughs> How you going, mate? Come down and around here. How's the coffee? The coffee's good. <laughs> I've got it right here. Thank you. As I said yesterday on stream, I said when you when you turned up after when you left, I'm like, you reminded me to have my coffee. <laughs> You're like my my reminder. It was like, oh, Jen, have your coffee, love. It's got a little fin there that I'd forgotten. So how are you today? And how's mum? So I've just got to go around. I'm going around the outlines of these lines now. I want to thicken them up. Now I'm happy with the, not that I can change the drawing anyway, but I'm happy with the drawing. I'm just going to bulk up these lines. Doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. I had a lovely weekend. It's Monday now when everyone's gone to work. So I'm here alone. Well, not alone. I've got my son-in-law out in the unit outside. But, um... Everyone's gone back to work and I'm just chilling and it's a much cooler day today. We've only got like 25 Celsius, so it's a lovely and cool day. We've had like 38 degrees the last few, which is a little bit too hot for me. Had a wonderful lunch with mum. Oh, nice. Very good. What did you have for lunch? <laughs> I had steak yesterday myself up a bit of steak because I was starving. 
So I am basically going over all these lines again. I shouldn't have to, but I think I do. I think I want to. But I won't necessarily do the tops where they're, they're at their finest. I'll do the spines. Like that. He's already, I'm, I want him to be a strong line drawing. Come down and around here. Oh, that doesn't matter, I can do that. Like that. We went to the hotel where I work. Oh, how's work going? How's it been? How have you been? I've applied back at my old job too. Because I love the I love the people. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so these are his dorsal fins. That's his pectoral fin on his right side. It's really hard to keep track of where all these fins go. <laughs> They do go off in all directions. And um, I have drawn this one a couple of times though, but once digitally and once in pit pens, which is slightly different. They're more of an ink or more of a brush pen, I suppose. The digital one was fun because that was when I was learning digital, I did one of these guys and he turned out pretty cool. I think he's actually on YouTube here somewhere because I started to venture into digital art for a little while. That was a fun journey. All right, so now I'm going to do tidy up these lines and then I get to go in with the watercolour. And these are surprisingly, that looks complex, but it is surprisingly simple because the lines do a lot of the work for you. Works okay, so many people off with COVID. Yeah, same here, same here. It's just running through everybody now. All right, so they come down and around there and I'm joining these lines up to that fin, the dorsal fin. Keep it there. Okay, happy with that this far. Now come up, get that spine. Just trying to trace over these other underlines because it's, it's a very, very fine micron pen that I used for the beginning of it. So what did you have for food, Shane? What did you eat? I love hearing about food. <laughs> um, because it's winter there, probably something wholesome and delicious and warm. Pop this line down in here. All right. And I will be setting up, I've got a new camera, a proper professional camera that I will be setting up in the next few days. I'm just waiting on the memory cards to arrive in the mail. So then we'll have much better quality footage which I'm very excited about for you guys to be able to see more, much more detail. Mum says hello. She's just going to bed. Good night, Mum. Hello and good night. <laughs> Give her a hug for me. All right, so come down and around here. All right, so that's basically the fins. I've just got to quickly, lightly draw in. Oh, see what I've done here? I've missed a line that comes down. I've got to be so careful that I don't mess up my lines. And get them accidentally continuing on where they shouldn't. That one's between, I know that's on his fin. Because there's some that go between his fins as well, like there. that.
Yeah, so I'm excited to use my new camera. That'll be much, much better for YouTube. And I have to learn how to use it. <laughs> but it will be much clearer. It's 4K. So I can use super high quality. So you'll be able to see my work at its best. So will I, which will be nice. Because at the moment, um, I forgot what those things are called. Mum had fish fingers and chips and I had a burger. Oh, nice. I haven't had fish fingers in 20 years. Since I was a kid, since my grandma. So 25 years I haven't had fish fingers. Last time I had them was with my grandma. Must try them again. I come down and around here. I'm going to change that one a little bit. Like that. Let's change the shape. So you can still, even though it's pen, you can still change shapes a little bit. Down and around here. Like that. Okay, so now I can work on his back end. I can get that line down here. Carefully marking around to make sure I connect them behind his fins like that. These guys are beautiful. They are the most beautiful fish and when they're, when they're grumpy they flare up and they look magnificent. I would not want to be putting my hand in a tank with one. <laughs> I often wonder at our aquarium how they clean the tank because um, they're covered in spikes. You'd have to wear mesh gloves and they're quite toxic, I think. I think they, well, I don't think they'd kill you, but I think they'd, if they'd hurt, they'd probably make you pretty sick getting stung by one of these guys. But I know we've got them on our reef. But I've never seen one. I have seen stonefish. They're ugly. They're scary looking and ugly and covered in spikes. These guys are gorgeous. But covered in spikes. <laughs> As is most things in Australia. It doesn't. It's, it's not covered in spikes. It's venomous. It's covered in teeth. <laughs> like a crocodile. They're not venomous. They hurt. <laughs> Uh, okay, coming around here. And it's a venomous creature season here too. We've got snakes and all kinds of fun things alive running around at the moment. Spiders everywhere. Snakes everywhere. Critters. Got a world full of critters. Actually, my friend sent me a funny meme yesterday. And it was a really cute little sugar glider because they're native here. And it has, not everything in Australia wants to kill you. And it's this person holding this little sugar glider. And it's like, yeah, but it'd like to. <laughs> and I laughed. I'm like, oh, my God. Probably would too, the poor little dude. There we go. Okay. I had turnip soup to start. Turnip soup. Ooh. Turnip soup. I've never had turnip soup. I like turnips. And I like pumpkin soup. I'm growing my own pumpkins at the moment. I've got my first crop of carrots ready to ready to pick too. I'm a bit excited. I'm going to be picking carrots today. Go out and pick all them. I've got zucchinis growing and pumpkins. So, I've got, and I've eaten my own beans. I've already had a crop of beans this year. I'm being all farmy. <laughs> Getting in touch with my inner farmer. Because we've got a farm, but um, it's the first year that I've grown vegetables on it. Usually we just grow hay crops for horses and stuff. But I'm like, no, I'm having vegetables. So we're having vegetables. That's a bit of fun. All right. So I'm just drawing these patterns on. And I'm going to go over it with um, watercolour wash, as you know. That's what's in the description. Um, I'm just trying to decide whether I add solid black 
to these fins. I can. I've got it with my size five pen. So this is a this is a three. Oh, this is the five. This is the largest. I thought I had an eight, but I can't find it. I'm gonna to have to go back to the art shop. What a shame! Back to the art shop. I'll go and get a size eight micron because <laughs> I need a bigger one. Just one size up or a couple of sizes up on this would be ideal. I think I've got one, but I think it's mixed up in some other stuff that I've got other pens. All right. So just draw these spines in. And then we can get onto the watercolour peeps. Would that be fun? And I'm going to do this guy as lots of white and he's lots of ready browns. So I'm going to use transparent sienna, a little bit of Indian red. And what else am I going to use? Transparent sienna, a little bit of Indian red. I'm having a quick look at him. He's got a little bit of orange. Hello, Carolyn. How are you, doll? How are you? How are you? I'm just mentally picturing the colours that I'm going to use for this guy. Beautiful. I love lionfish. They're amazing looking. They are incredible, aren't they? They are stunning looking fish. I love fish. I've got a couple of aquariums. I'd, I'd be too scared to have one of these guys, though, because of all the spines. And I, I don't know how they clean the tanks. They must have special gloves to clean their tank because they're grumpy. <laughs> they are grumpy fish, these ones, but they are absolutely magnificent to look at. I love, like when I go to the aquarium, I love standing and just watching them. And the jellyfish. Jellyfish are beautiful to watch, too. And they've got stingrays and everything there. And the stingrays are hilarious. They've got really big personalities. Doing well? Good. Glad to hear. Glad to hear it, Dal. Right, so that's pretty much the line work on this guy done. So I'm just going to, I am going to fill in some of these dots at the back. I'm going to make them very dark. The rest of him. I'm going to do with transparent sienna. Um, so how was your day and how was the rest of your weekend? It's Monday here now. And it's a much cooler day, so I'm a much happier camper. Much, much cooler. It's about 10 degrees cooler. It's only 25 today. And you had minus 10 yesterday, didn't you? That's scary. <laughs> uh, And you do beautiful work, Carolyn. I jumped into your channel and had a watch, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, jellyfish are so stuck, calming to watch. Jellyfish are magnificent. They are beautiful. I could watch them all day. I've got like a big tropical tank, and I've got a big uh, normal tank with just big fat goldfish that are my like my my fish puppies. <laughs> and um, I love sitting watching them too every night. I, I I find I don't watch TV. I watch the fish because we've got a tank that's about as long as our wall and um, the fish are a good few inches, like they're big fish. So they're fun and they're playful. They're clever little things. Actually, someone sent me, I think it was on TikTok, a TikTok of a goldfish and the guy was playing with it and it was swimming away and swimming back to him and getting into his hands and then swimming off and swimming back to him. It was so cute. Monday is a holiday here. Oh, so I don't have to work tomorrow. Cold still today, but should get back to normal tomorrow. Cool. Very cool. Excellent. It's nice to be able to have a day to rest and just not have to think about anything except housework and kids. <laughs> so there's no rest, is there, really? <laughs> but you might have some time for a little bit of art, hopefully. That'd be good. My kids are all grown up. So they do their own thing pretty much now. It's me and the dogs. Me and the fish and the dogs it is. Doing our own thing. I'm just filling in these patterns on his tail. I was tossing up. I also found a beautiful picture of a crocodile. Beautiful headshot of a crocodile. And I'm like... I need to draw a croc too because crocs are dramatic creatures. They are magnificent. 
one of my favourite creatures on earth is a crocodile for drama and just sheer size because here they get big enough to eat a cow in like a couple of mouthfuls. <laughs> Um, Monter Monterey Bay Aquarium has a bunch of live cams on their tanks, so sometimes I put those on in my background. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. They do that with our birds and stuff. Um, we've got a couple of eagle nests around town, and they have uh, cameras on the nest, so everyone can watch the eggs hatch and stuff. That's really gorgeous. I actually, on Twitch, one of the channels that I follow over on Twitch is um, Ottercam. <laughs> they have otters, and it's so funny. They are just the most hilarious little critters. Oh, I've got to have a sip of my coffee. I have a massive lino cut video that I need to take down from six and a half hours footage to ten minutes and do a voiceover. Yeah, voiceover, I, I'm, I love a live stream, but lots of people don't have a lot of time to sit and just watch. So I, I do that a lot. I cut down my long ones into, into time lapses and it does make it more better for everyone, I think. What have I done here? That's not the brush that I want to use. That one is. I've lost one of my brushes. I haven't lost it. I've put it somewhere because I've put things. So I'm going to grab Transparent Sienna. So I've, I've, I've got an in-between size brush somewhere that's that between the large and between the small. And I can't find it. So... But I went away and I took my paints with me. So I may have left it on, at our holiday place. So I'm just going to go in with transparent sienna to begin with. Onto these. It's my birthday in less than two weeks. Ooh, very good. 21 again. <laughs> 21 again. I've been 21 a few times now. I had, Actually, yesterday I was talking to my kids about something or other and we're talking about my age. And because I totally don't worry about it, I'd never thought about it really. And I'm like, shit, how old am I? I forgot how old I was. I'm like, shit, it is. I have to count the years. I'm like, shit, I'm mid mid fifties. As you do. <laughs> yes. What are you up to? Well, Shane's got his gorgeous mum, so they're probably gonna do something funny. What you were gonna travel to? You were going to go to Canada, weren't you, at some point? But I don't know whether the world... Is everyone travelling? Are you guys able to travel? We're still... We're just starting with our countries just opening up now to being able to travel around our own country anyway. I think we can travel to certain overseas countries, just not all. So this is literally... This is a very... Surprisingly, it looks complex, but it is a very simple painting because it's only going to comprise of about three layers so the first layer is drawing second layer is the base and the third will be shadows and dark well maybe four layers shadows of the last two layers just building up the the consistency and the strength of the shadows and I'm really enjoying the pen to me it just creates a little bit more of a striking effect with the, with the micron I, I have done a lot of work with just pencil and watercolor but I really do like the effect of the the micron I just I love because I love drawing I love to see a drawing and I love to watch people draw I love seeing people's process I could sit for hours it's like watching goldfish I could sit for hours and watch people sketch makes me happy it's very relaxing it's like um therapy watching people draw and there's a fella I think I mentioned him yesterday I can't remember his name that I watch on YouTube and he does patterns. He just does patterns. And it's so relaxing. <laughs> so relaxing to watch. I'm going to do a background on this. I'm going to do a blue, having a big party. It's, oh, we're in the middle of Omicron in US. Yeah, we're the same. We're the same. It's hit here like a ton of bricks. Um. So we're avoiding crowds in public places. Having a big party if it's the works Christmas party, I'm hijacking. <laughs> oh, good job. Good job. And again, I'm using my um, hot press, so smooth watercolour paper, because it's strong enough to hold the pen and a few layers of watercolour. 
because if I use sketch paper, the watercolour would just eat it. Wouldn't necessarily work too well. Because I do tend to get a bit heavy handed with the pen. Come down and around here. I've just got to, I'm just trying to focus on the fins at the second. And then I'll add um, I'm going to stay off. I've got to darken up shadow, create shadows between these because he's creamy coloured, but he's actually in a lit tank, this guy. But I, I got this reference photo off Unsplash, where I get most of my references. If I haven't taken them myself, I get them off Unsplash because they're royalty free and they're beautiful. And I've got a particular photographer, David Claude, that I follow, who's an Australian photographer. Oh, no, he's not Australian. He lives, he lives in Australia, but he just does the most gorgeous macro photography and micro photography and wildlife and flowers and you name it, he does it all. It's fascinating. So that's my go-to if I don't have the photos myself. And for some reason, all of my photos deleted off my iPad today. I had no photos. They're all gone. All my videos, all my everything, it's all gone off my iPad. And I don't know why. <laughs> Yay, technology. So not the end of the world. I get to take all those photos again. But um, it's like, oh, poop. There was dog videos and everything, all my little puppies. And they're all gone. And I don't know why. I think I had an update and it ate everything. My updates eat things, apparently. <laughs> So now I'm going to come around here, filling the ones on his dorsal, on his spine. So th these are pectorals because they're on his pecs, on the muscles on the side of his chest. And these are his dorsal because they're on his back. All right. Getting there. We're getting there now. Uh, there's a pattern here that I haven't done, coming down between. This is where it can be a bit tricky, is joining the, the, the lines on his back. I don't want to miss any, because if you have, end up with a step pattern like a checkerboard, and if you accidentally get them and get your lines in the wrong spot, and it looks a bit silly. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to start to darken up. So what I'm going to do is grab another one, more transparent sienna, just less water. So it's exactly the same colour, just less water. So it will be a stronger consistency. It'll be darker. But I'm not doing it solid dark. I'm going to do parts of the stripes, not all of them, not completely from top to bottom. I want the bottom to be darker and the top to be lighter. Because he's very much darker down here. So I'll darken up all here. I could even add a little bit of Indian red, but I love transparent sienna. I might add a little bit of Indian red, we'll see, just to these darker ones down the bottom. I've got to darken up just in here. Along his back. Like that. And this paper, this hot press paper, the paint doesn't move, doesn't, it seems to flow much more on the rough paper. It doesn't move around, you've got to move it with your brush more so on this. It doesn't move as much free, much as, as freely as it does on the hot press, the cold press, sorry. Cold press is rough, hot press is smooth. Okay, so fill in these ones a bit darker. And then I'm going to go in with some blue when I've done all of these. Not making them solid. Like I said, I'm doing, I'm just leaving little bits of the original layer that you can see through underneath. Okay, come down in here. 
these ones are darker. Like that. Okay. And on the top as well, I will have to add some red. Whoops. Doesn't matter if I go outside the lines a little bit. That's the beauty of watercolour. There we go. All right, now I am going to add a little bit of red. Carolyn, cats are uh, letting me know at six dinner time. I'll be back in a few. No worries, Dale. No worries. One must feed one's kitties. When the when it calls, you must. I have dogs that tell me what time it is, <laughs> so I, I know exactly where you're coming from. My dogs are always telling me what to do. So I'm just gonna. This is Indian red. And it's a very, you can see it's a very similar colour, or Caput Mortem, it's a very similar colour. It's just a little bit richer, a little bit more rich in its um, colour, its tones. But it's one of my favourite, I love the reds and the red browns. I'm a very red, red brown person when it comes to paint. I couldn't live without them. I need my red browns. Not much for vibrant colours but I do love my red browns. All right. I'm actually going to take that down the front of this. And get that on. And it's quite, it's not so watery. I've got um, a lot less water, so it stays strong. All right. Try and again going with the darker bits on the bottoms like that. I've got to get some blues in here. I'm ex excited to get the blues in. I've got to really darken up under here, strengthen up. It's not darker. It's just a stronger tone. I keep saying darker, and it's not darker. It's stronger. There we go. There, and same here. Oops, get a bit more Indian red on there. So I've barely got any water in this. Oh, barely got any water in this at all. And I'm using a big brush, which is a bit hefty. All right, that will do. Now I'm going to add some blues. I'm going to clean my brush thoroughly. I might grab a smaller brush because that one's a bit cumbersome and go into the cobalt. Going into my cobalt blue. Let's see how this goes. Because there's shadows in amongst. It's not all just white. Anywhere that there's shadows, I'm going to add a little bit of blue and it'll help to make him pop. He's darker around this front part here. And while he's still, this will dry back a couple of tones as well. Um, it does fade as it dries. You lose about a tone, a tone's value, two, two, two tones maybe. Everything dries back to a slightly different colour. But it helps to... Get that in there. Now, and this one, I'm actually going to wash over most of it like that. And I can go over most of this as well. And that's quite diluted, cadmium blue. There we go. Now he's got shadow on here, shadow at the top. I will leave some of it white and most of these fins have got shadow. He's bright white along his back and he's a little bit darker down here. So I can shadow that. Now. I might try and do a background 
I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm like, oh. All you do if you get too much water, too much paint, dry your brush and pick it up like a mop. It'll the brush. If you take take the moisture out of your brush, clean your brush, take the moisture out of it, stick it in the paint that's on the paper, a blob of paint on the paper, and it'll absorb back up like a mop. And it really is a good way. Don't panic. Just pick it up with your brush. Get your brush nice and dry. Okay, and I'm going to darken up, just dropping almost pure pigment, cobalt blue, while it's still a little bit damp, into the deepest shadow areas on these fins, like that. Same here. That. Then I'm going to drop an indigo in the background, I think. We'll do that. Pop a little bit. We're going to do that. We're going to do indigo in the background. So what I'm going to do is get my indigo on my palette. Get a ton of it on my palette. A ton of it. And I'm going to very carefully clean my brush. And I'm not going to do it solid to the whole paper. I'm just going to wet, I'm going to do it in sections because otherwise it will dry too quick. Take the water, clean water, around the edge of the fish and drop the indigo in. I can do this half at a time. So I'll do this half and then I'll do the back half. So go into my indigo and let it flow. And let that just run down and around the outside of the fish. Like that. Let it do its magic as watercolour does. I do love watercolour for that reason. Because it is magical. Now you see I've got a big a, a puddle at the bottom. I clean my brush, take the excess moisture out and lift it up. And that comes up off the paper. No worries at all. And you don't end up with a puddle. And I do love doing this as an effect at the bottom, at the ends, at the back, of the behind a picture. I don't want a hard line, so I'm going to lift that again. And drag that down a fraction. Let it flow a little bit. All right. Now, I'll let that... I've got to come up here with the water. I've got to be a little bit careful, because I don't want it to do weird stuff. And if you do too much... I don't want it two different tones to, to the one that I've just put down. While that's still damp, I can run that back in there, help that flow a bit and blend a bit more into that one. Like that. All right, clean my brush and then cut around. I've got two doodars of water, two bottles of water here that I can dip into. One's clean and one's got dirt like the old paint in it. So I go into my clean water to do this around the outside. Oh, I was walking back into my studio so I saw from a distance. Looks really good. Easier to see in the big picture without getting distracted by looking at the director. Yes. Yep, you've got to look from a distance. That's the thing about painting. It's standing back. A friend of mine that I used to do art shows with, amazing artist, and he did bridges and things. And when you looked at them up close, they were just a mass of lines. But when you looked at them for a distance, you could tell exactly where they were. It was amazing. It was so clever. So clever. So I'm just dropping that paint in. I can drag it to the edges a little bit. And I like to have these. I don't fill in completely to the edges of the paper. I love to have that soft, sort of fuzzy outline. Yeah, detail can, you can get too drawn into detail. And some of the best, the best artists are impressionists. Like, I'm sort of a mixture. I, I'm not photographic, I'm not realism. But I, I love things to look real, but I still am quite impression-y in the way I work. I'm not exact, not photographic. If I want to photograph, I'll take a photo. But, um, yeah, I have fun with sort of being ex expressive. So now I'm going to just darken up underneath and in close to him. I could possibly wet the paper again. Still damp though. It's not flowing now, but it's still damp. 
but I won't go outside the line that I've done. I just want to darken up that little bit in close to him at the front, like that. And I can drag out that edge like that. I've got to do a bit in here too, a bit in there. Just I'm going to re-wet that because it's, it really is a bit too dry. And then drop some more pigment in, get a bit more on me, on me thing. Don't want it too terribly strong, but there we go. And I'll drag that around and let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Like that. And I can soften those edges. I've got to wet around that bit too, just there. Drop a little bit in. Come down here. And like I watch you guys do abstract. You're not, there's no, I can't do abstract. I love abstract. But my brain just doesn't get it, <laughs> like to be able to create it. It's funny how everyone's got their own, what how they see and how they create. Right, coming down and dropping into there. Like I love that acrylic pouring. Oh my goodness, that's magical stuff. It's like watching a, um, what are those things, kaleidoscope watching the acrylic pores, oh, they're magical. All right, so now I'm just gonna drag that, clean my brush, take the excess moisture out and drag that down so that bead at the bottom runs to the bottom. I do need to put a little bit up here as well now, don't I? A little bit more on his face. Just wet that a little bit. And this will, I will be turning this into a time lapse as well. So anyone, if you haven't got time to sit back and watch however long this has been, how long has this been? Oh, it's only been an hour. Watch an hour's worth of art. You can watch this in time-lapse format. In a, in a couple of hours, I'll have it uploaded. It'll take me an hour or so to set it up. All right, so I'm just gonna blob, blob in some stronger color here. Take it down like that. Got to drag that up. Whoop, that's a bit of dirty water. Doesn't matter. I just gotta wet this. I want it to flow a bit more. Just drop that in. Acrylic pouring is so much fun. Oh my God, acrylic pouring is magical. I've never done it, but I've got friends who do and I love watching them do it. Love to watch them do it. I follow quite a few pour acrylic pouring channels actually, I have to say, because it is very therapeutic to watch. All right, so just pick up that bead at the bottom and he's not far off done. I've got, I've got to clean my brush and I'm actually gonna lift, if I can lift a little bit of that it's a little bit too dark in there. I'm going to add, get my little brush now, because the background's pretty well done. I'm happy with the background. It's a little bit dark there, but that will dry back a fraction paler. I'm having a look at my browns, and I need to get a bit more of a red. Where's my Caput Morton? Get my Caput Morton, and I'm going to add a bit of almost pure Caput Morton onto these stripes, not all over, just on the bottoms of them. And I've got to be a bit careful that it doesn't blend into the, I don't get it near the background because if that goes in with the blue, it's going to make a hideous purple. And we don't want that. Now, he's got, well, I've got to find the body lines on him there. It's got a body line there, a body line there. Oh, 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 spider just dropped in front of me. Oh my word. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Come on, spider. You go over there. Be free. Run like the wind, Spidey. It wasn't a venomous one. He can live. I just grabbed him by his web and put him away. Put him over on the chair over there. <laughs> it's really scary when they drop on your head. Oh, my God. I opened the front door the other day and a huntsman fell on my head. If you've ever seen a huntsman, they're not pleasant. They don't They don't bite. They're harmless. But they, t they have a tendency of landing on your bloody head. And I don't know what. I think they've got a sense of humour. And they sit on door jams. They sit on the tops of doors and just wait for you to walk in. I swear they do. They've got an evil sense of humour. But yeah, one landed on my head the other day and I just about hit the roof. Because they're tickly. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it was a bit of an eek. But that one just dropped down directly in my glasses line. I don't know whether he, could, he was only tiny. He was daddy long legs. So I'll let him live. 
He can be happy and live happily ever after. And I'll let huntsmen live too. I just don't want them living on my face. They can live other places. I don't, I don't need to be living near my head. Hello, Bear Bear. Now the dog wants to jump up. <laughs> I'll come and say hello then. We're doing the ritual. I'm streaming. The dog's got to say hello. Say hello, Bear Bear. Hello, Bear Bear. Stinky breath. You got stinky breath, the Baba. We had your teeth checked, but you got stinky breaths. I definitely would not be able to handle that. <laughs> Oh my god! The first time it happened, it was hilarious. It was actually hilarious. I was I'm, I was at work, and it was night time, and I knew I had a huntsman living in my car. I knew it was there, but he kept hiding. Like every time you go to get go to get him, he'd run under the dashboard and hide. And if you ever seen a, a huntsman, they're about sort of the size of the palm of your hand, right? And he hid under the dash. Some of them can get to the size of a dinner plate, but he this one was the size of the palm of my hand. Anyway, so I'm in the car. And I felt it because it was hot. So I had shorts, short sleeves and short pants on. And I felt it run across my foot. And I'm like, oh, no, this is not good. So then I get to work and it runs up my arm and across my face. Well, I've jumped out of the car, slapping myself in the head, bouncing around like an absolute idiot, screaming at the top of my lungs. God knows what everyone in the shops thought. But, <laughs> but the, hunt, the spider escaped and I escaped. So the world was happy. Neither of us got hurt. <laughs> I think the spider had a bit of a laugh at my expense and took off across the car park, and that was the end of that. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of fun experiences with spiders. Yay, Australia. Yay, Australia. <laughs> it's a special place full of special creatures um, with, with senses of humour. They have, they have strange humour. But... Um, All right, I'm, it's not far from done, you know. I'm sort of fiddling. I could, I've got to darken up these ones a little bit, pop another line on there. I might leave that now. What do you reckon? What, how do you, what do you guys think? I think he's pretty much done. It's a simple sort of drawing. It took an hour from start to finish, drawing and everything from bare paper, an hour. So I'm quite happy with that. So I think I'll just sign him. Sign him there, and I'm going to call him done. So, thank you, so you're staying here. Oh, <laughs> cool. Yeah, staying there. I'm coming there too. I've, I have a joke with a friend of mine that, yeah, I've, it's, it's yeah, there's not this. You don't have the creatures. Mind you, you guys have rattlesnakes and black widows and things. Just different. They're just different creatures, and I think we just have more, more condensed amounts of them. They're everywhere here. Because the whole place is warm. I'm just using a bit of that indigo into the very darkest bits. But he's done. So I need to stop. <laughs> so thank you so much for hanging out, guys and girls. You guys and girls are awesome. And I absolutely love having a chat and creating art with you guys because you inspire me and I love our talks. So I will possibly be back tomorrow. We'll see how the mop flops and what's going down in my life. But I'll be back, yeah, probably tomorrow, if not definitely on Wednesday, which is your Tuesday. So thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you when I'm looking at you. Okie doke.